Hey neighbor, we're planting cow peas today. It's the middle of August, we're in zone eight here in the south, and we're gonna plant fall cow peas because it's the right time to grow cow peas. We do a great job with them in the fall of the year. Insect pressure is left. Simple, easy to grow. I honestly don't know why more people don't grow this. If you're trying to grow your own food and eat clean, this is a no-brainer. We're gonna show you today just how easy it is. There's a lot of choices on cow peas, and let's talk about a couple of them. You got the cream type peas right here. These here are the smaller peas normally. They have a little bit more of a sweeter flavor to them. And we have zippers here, and you see the zipper bin is empty. The reason is they sold out. Zipper is our best selling cow pea. It sells out every year. So if you ever want to plant zippers, you better order your seeds in the spring because they're going to be gone come fall. Um, but the one we're going to plant today is top pink pink eye it's a variety I haven't planted in a few years but i love this one right here when we talk about cow peas and folks we're not talking about english peas we're talking about cow peas southern peas there's really two types of these that have different growing habits we got indeterminates as some people call them the vining type and we have the bush types the bush types are the determinate types and they don't get as big this one right here is a bush type it's going to get about this tall and we'll set about two and a half inch i'm shooting two and a half feet tall and it's just going to make peas on top hence the name top pick which i really like loads up on top man just loads its pods up everywhere heavy producer and it's easy to harvest easy to pick which we love because we pick all ours by hand as you can see there these are pink eyes and I'm gonna plant these with a hoss garden seeder. Now what I did is I took the number three seed plate. Now I had to make me a seed plate. I had to drill these out a little bit. And the reason why is if I'm planting cream peas, the peas are gonna be a lot smaller. If I'm planting a crowder type, such as uh, zippers, they're gonna be a lot larger. So the same seed plate's not gonna work on each one of these type peas. So I made me a seed plate with number three plate. And what I did is I drilled this out 24, no, excuse me, 23 64s. Yeah, 23 64s right here. That is right under 3 8 Now, if you don't have a 23 64s, you could use a 3 8 It'd be real close there. Then I went on the bottom side with a step bit. I know you probably can't see it. And I uh, just kind of run that step bit in there and, and made that flare, that hole out a little bit so the seed will release a little better as the plate goes around there. Didn't take me long to do. 2364s and then a step bit on the back side just to flare it out. Now I didn't go all the way through because I wanted to maintain that whole size on the top where the seed's going to load at. And it seems to be about the perfect size there. What we want is a hole where the pea fits in there good, but only one does. And you want it to match up the thickness of the plate as much as possible. And that one right there is ideal. I got out here yesterday afternoon and got this plot ready. What I've done here is I've, I've made one big plot out of two small plots. I had, used to have a walkway down in the middle of this and I took that walkway out. So my plot's a lot longer now. Had corn on the end down there in the springtime, had squash up here, and then we're gonna plant peas on the whole plot. With these determinate type or these bush type peas here, my spacing is gonna be three foot. I always like my row spacing about three foot on these. In in row spacing, you can do anywhere from three to six inches on that right there. Now my seed plate there has got six holes in it. So that's gonna put my spacing, according to that seed plate, a little over three inches apart. Now these peas here, I've got 80% germination. And on peas, you will normally find that that's gonna be pretty much an average germination on peas. Very seldom do we see peas come in in the 90% range. Happens occasionally, but not very often. So we're not have 100% germination, we got to account for that. So we're gonna plant three and a quarter or so inches apart. And if we end up with them every six inches apart, that'll be okay, be about right. If we need to thin them out a little bit, we can come back. But I, you know, six, you could probably get by with eight inches, anywhere in there. Six inches probably is my, my ideal seed space on these bush types. Now, vining types such as Red Ripper, we would do that different. On those vining types, you need to give more room because they're going to have a lot more foliage. And as the name implies, they're going to vine everywhere. If I was planting something out here, such as Red Ripper, the indeterminate types, 
I would probably go four to even five foot row spacings, and then you could easily go a foot apart in row. And then you would still probably have a little bit of trouble, you know, getting down inside the rows where you could harvest them. But I think that would be a decent setup there as far as how you would plant them. Now these cow peas are legumes. That means they don't need little or very little fertilizer. If you wanted to follow a spot behind spring corn with fall peas, I think that'd be ideal. However, you could follow with a lot of different crops there. I wouldn't follow legume behind legume, say snap beans or peas of some sort you had in spring. I wouldn't follow that with a pea. But anything that's kind of a heavy feeder, corn being the heaviest feeder, it'd be ideal to follow that up with one of these legumes. Now I'm gonna plant these things about half, three quarter inches deep. That's all I really need. All I wanna do is cover them up because I'm planting right on top of my drip tape. So, you know, irrigating these things is not gonna be an issue. I can wet them and I can get them up pretty quick. And boom, just like that, we're through planting. Now, these cow peas don't like a lot of fertilizer. Legumes, like I said, so if you want to fertilize them just a little bit when they come up, that's fine. Don't fertilize them after that. Some of them, like iron clay, they don't even recommend any fertilizer at all. What happens is if you fertilize them too much, you're gonna grow vine and not peas. And we're trying to grow peas. The only major problem with growing cow peas is insect pressure. They take very little fertilizer, but, Southern Pinky Crew is the major pest for cow peas, southern peas. That's where it actually stings that pod and you see that little black speck on the pea. We don't like that because that egg of the insect is in that pea and we don't want to eat eggs. So we don't like that. Now that insect is a lot more active in the spring than it is in the fall. We don't have near as much problem in the fall, but we still need to maintain a tight pesticide spray program there. And I recommend Bug Buster too. Bug Buster 2 is going to control that southern peaky curio. It's also going to control aphids, which are your two biggest pests on cow peas. Now this is inoculant. This is important for legumes. Now if you've planted peas or beans in a plot in the last two to three years, you could very likely not have to apply this right here because you got that beneficial bacteria already into your soil. But if you're planting in a spot that hadn't had a legume, specifically peas in it, in the last two to three years, you want to get you some of this right here. And this particular one comes in a shaker can. I like this because it's easy to apply. And you just kind of shake it in your fur there. This right here is a beneficial bacteria that helps with that relationship with legumes with the nodulation of the root system there to be able to attract that nitrogen. It's important that you have this beneficial bacteria on legumes in the soil. If you've planted it before, you don't need it. But I would highly recommend you doing this, especially if you're planting on a new garden spot. An easy to grow food crop, don't take a lot of fertilizer. These cow peas are also drought resistant. They uh, you need to water them if it gets real dry, but they will take some dry weather. So it's one of the easiest things to grow out there. And you talk about a sustainable food source. We like to put these things up in jars. If we don't have any refrigeration, we got peas. And it's a staple in our house at least once or twice a week. So if you've grown cow peas before, you know exactly what I'm talking about, but if you have not, I would highly encourage you to grow cow peas in your garden. I think it should be a part of everybody's food garden plan, especially in the South.